Hello, Chemistry Clan. Um, we have reached a new topic, which is looking at thermodynamics. And we'll call this Thermodynamics 2 because we did talk about Thermodynamics 1 in the first part of general chemistry. And with that general chemistry part one aspect, we had the notion of delta H or enthalpy. You guys might still have you know nightmares or things of that about calorimetry. Um but we did discuss at length the idea of enthalpy, delta H, how to measure it using calorimetry. And we had a couple of different, you know, kind of relationships that your, your delta H for a process could be uh, negative or exothermic. That would be giving off heat. for a particular process. And then we had the other side of the coin, which is our delta H of the reaction would actually be positive or endothermic um, um, needs heat as far as the reaction is concerned. So, so we have that notion of, of, of delta H and we were always hinting at the idea of um, the free energy equation, which was delta G is equal to delta H minus T delta S. So this is our free energy Often they call this uh, Gibbs free energy. And so that's one aspect of the equation. Delta H, we've already talked about. And that comes from our general chemistry part one and so the new flavor that we're trying to get into today or in subsequent lectures is the idea of entropy right and so that's that's really the focus of of, of what we're we're going to get into so a lot of students and, and, and people could say that, well, if something is endothermic, right? It's non-spontaneous, um, but that's really um, not true. Um, um, that's really the, the nature of the game here is getting into, you know, spontaneity. In the sense that reactions... Um, can be spontaneous or non-spontaneous. And there are, you know, three factors that describe this idea of being spontaneous or non-spontaneous. Delta H is one. Delta S is another. And we'll find temperature is the actual third. And that dictates whether things are 
you know, non-spontaneous in terms of reaction or are spontaneous um, in terms of an actual reaction. So that's the nature of, of what we're getting into is, is this idea of thermodynamics. So taking a step back from equilibrium constants, but we'll find that we'll get into those as well as far as looking at spontaneity of equilibrium uh, processes. To begin with this chapter, we should talk about the second law of thermodynamics. And the second law of thermodynamics um, basically states that if the delta S of the universe is positive, then the reaction will be spontaneous. So let's get more into this idea of entropy and what entropy is and what's the entropy of the universe and, and how does it apply to, to, to what we're talking about here in thermodynamics 2. So entropy, which we're looking at... Um, in the in these definitions is equal to s and and we could also have s you know as far as our little circle you might remember this as being standard state where we have you know 298 kelvin 1 molar one atmosphere in terms of conditions. Um, these are things that we tend to, to look up in tables. And entropy is equal to the amount of randomness. Um, we could call that chaos or discord in a particular process. So as an example, your bedroom, when, uh, you know, started off at the beginning of the week, your bedroom was clean, everything was neat, your desk was organized. Um, but by the end of the week, it's complete chaos. There's clothes everywhere. There's books everywhere. And that's just the nature of the universe that, that we actually are always going to a more chaotic system or a more entropic system. And so that's the idea of the second law of thermodynamics that if we're increasing entropy, well, that is a spontaneous process. And, and, and looking at your bedroom, Right. It takes effort to actually clean up your bedroom. It takes effort to put your books away and to organize that material. Um, but it doesn't take much effort at all, if any, for that to be disorganized, you know, throughout the work week and what have you. So that's the, the notion of, of what entropy is. It's equal to the amount of randomness or discord in a particular process. Entropy is also a very temperature dependent. Um, and so we have to realize uh, that idea as well is that um, since entropy is, is very temperature dependent, That means we need to
to look at processes with a common temp. And so there'll be more to that later as far as as far as this idea of, of, of temperature <laughs> and how that comes into play um, with entropy. So there are a couple of equations that we have to then understand as far as, as you know, what is this delta S in the universe? How can we relate it? Two processes, whether they be reaction processes or or phase change processes. And so the equation that we look to, at least in the beginning, is this, is that the delta S of the universe is equal to the delta S of the system plus the delta S of the surroundings. And so basically, again, this is going back to that idea of enthalpy and that idea of heat flow and that within the system, we have, you know, the system being the universe, right? We have two components. We have um, the system and we have the surroundings, a system is what um, we are interested in. Basically, as chemists. Um, but really, we have to, to take two things into play as far as now this idea of the universe. And we're interested uh, in this for spontaneous processes. So we're really interested in two aspects of this equation. And I'll be honest in saying that the delta S of the surroundings can be a little bit, you know, foggy. Um, there's a lot of things in the surroundings. And so that can be oftentimes a, an area of, of confusion or an area that's really hard to lock down since there's so many extra features um, within the actual surroundings compared to something that we can put together and we can develop, which is the actual system. But it's the interchange between both of those which lends itself to um, the notion of a spontaneous process. So, in going forward in uh, the next section, we're really just talking a lot about entropy and, and what that means in terms of dictating or helping to dictate whether a process or a reaction is actually spontaneous, whether a reaction or process is non-spontaneous, or, or even going to the next step, which is, is this a temperature-dependent um, process? So that's the, the goal, is basically to apply those, those different um, ideas. Um, you know, how can we predict whether a process or reaction is spontaneous? or whether it is not spontaneous or whether a you know whether a decrease or increase in temperature
will lead to spontaneity. So that's the <coughs> excuse me, the main thrust of, of, of this section is to get into predicting whether processes are spontaneous or not spontaneous or temperature dependent. We already have a notion of whether reactions or processes are endothermic or exothermic, um, but that's with a relationship to delta H. We now have to bring in delta S to figure out whether these processes are spontaneous or not. We could have things that are endothermic that are still spontaneous. In fact, there are plenty of salts that you can dissolve into water. And if you would touch the water solution, you would find that that water solution is cold, meaning that it's really an endothermic, endothermic process. But yet all the solid salt dissolved, so that means that it's a spontaneous process as well. So there's more to this question of, you know, whether processes or reactions are spontaneous or not spontaneous than simply delta H. And, and that other missing piece here, or really pieces, I should say, is delta S. Um, and then going along with delta S, this idea of temperature. So that's where we're going in subsequent lectures uh, in this uh, new playlist.